I've come to see you because um, I was talking to my brother last night right. uh, and he has just had a, a blood test for his uh, prostate okay. and he was suggesting that perhaps I should uh, do the same uh -huh. thing. Right, and when you spoke to your brother, has he had the blood test and had a result? Or I think, I'm not sure, he didn't mention that there was a result but he's just okay. said that I've had this blood test um, as part of a kind of medical that uh -huh. he was undertaking. Right. And, um, and perhaps it would be good for me to do this, the same thing. Oh, okay, right. Can you tell me a bit more about how old your brother is? Uh, well, he's 65. Is he? And you're? Uh, I'm 56. Okay. So he's a bit older than me. Okay. And what concerns has, has that raised in you? Well, um, uh, it's just, I suppose, made me think that, that perhaps you know, at my age I should be starting right. to think about that because I do know that men um, uh, in their kind of later years do tend yeah. to, um, you know, have, uh, have problems with their prostate. You're right, but um, for us men that as we grow older the prostate can certainly start to cause yes. problems. Can I just check with you how much you know about the prostate? And Not a great deal, I have to okay. say, at this stage. Okay. Well, the prostate's a little gland that sits below the bladder. Right and it wraps around the pipe that goes from the bladder out to the penis. As men, this little gland gets bigger as we grow older, so right. from our mid-fifties, from your sort of age yes. onwards, it gets a little bit bigger and it can cause problems. Right. So would it be right if I check, if I'm, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about your waterworks to see if it's causing that sort of, of course, problem? Yeah. Do you have a good stream when you pass water? Oh yeah, I think so. so I don't not noticed anything, okay. you know, untoward really. Okay. And when you finish weeing, do you find that you have to wee again at all? Uh, no. Okay. No. And do you happen to get up at night to wee? Uh, maybe once in the night. Okay. And is that something that's new, or have you always got up once at night? I can't remember, but it seems to have been going on for some time. So. Right. Okay, and with what your brother was saying, what, how did that leave you feeling about the test? Oh, well, I, I don't really know what, what it does and, oh, okay. and what the, the purpose of it is and right. you know, what happens if, if it's a bad result. I mean, oh, I, I, sure. I know nothing. Sure. Okay. I can tell you a bit more about the test right. and we can talk about what would be the right decision for you. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Now, the prostate gland produces some chemicals and a fluid that goes into sperm, and that's its normal function. That's what it does when we're younger. Right. As we get older, the prostate gland itself gets bigger, and as it gets bigger, sometimes you can get little bits within the prostate gland that become cancerous. Right. Okay. And those parts of the gland that become cancerous can produce a change in a blood test called the PSA test. Right. Okay. Are you with me so far? Yes, so it can. You, it you, can. You mentioned the word can, so it doesn't yeah. necessarily. It doesn't always, and this is one of the things really that we need to think about before we do this kind of blood test. Mm -hmm. Can I just take you through the test, because I know that it can cause some confusion. Can I just take you through the test, because I know that it can cause some confusion. Right. Now, we've talked about the PSA test, I've explained that the PSA is a chemical that's produced by the prostate gland. Right, yes. Now, when we do the PSA test, we're looking to see whether the PSA test is raised for your age. So because for all men, as we grow older, as the prostate gland gets bigger, it produces a bit more of this chemical called PSA. Mm -hmm. So a man in their 80s would have a bigger PSA than a man in their 50s. Okay. And that would be normal. Right. Okay. So what we're looking for is whether the PSA is above what it should be for your age. Your age yes. Does that make sense? Yes, I think that's it. Now, along with that, 
we have a further complication. And the complication is that if your PSA is high, it can be high for a number of reasons, not just prostate cancer. Right. So, for example, if you have a water infection, that can put your PSA up. If you've recently had sex, if you've recently come, within the last 48 hours, your PSA level will be high. Right. And So that could lead to, to thinking that there's something that was there that's uh, right. isn't actually there. That's right. Yeah. What I do know is that if we find a high test and it's due to one of those things, it causes all sorts of worry. Mm. So those are the reasons why a PSA test might be a bit on the high side. Mm. So how do you make the decision then? <laughs> well, things are, in fact, a little bit more complicated than just that. Oh, really? <laughs> so if I tell you that sometimes the PSA test can be quite normal for your age, but there could still be a prostate cancer. So it doesn't always raise that? Um, PSA. Absolutely right. And as a result of that, what we do is we check in another way, and that involves doing an examination. It involves me examining the prostate gland, mm -hmm. which, you, which you do by doing an examination of your bottom. Now, by examining the bottom end, I can feel the surface of the prostate gland, and that will give me more information to know if there's a problem. I see. So what we do is we have the PSA test mm -hmm. and an examination together. The two things combined give me a far better idea of if this is prostate cancer that we're dealing with. Right. Now, even if it does turn out to be that your PSA level is high and that your prostate is big or I'm worried about it, the next stage would be for me to send you to see one of the specialists who would take a sample from the prostate. Right. They would be looking to see if in fact you do have any of those prostate cancer cells. Right, so that would be it. The, that's the, the kind of the, the the final stage of tests, if you like, then. Before. That's right. That would be... So you'd have to have a reasonable idea that, uh, that there's something afoot. That's right. But if I tell you that around two-thirds of the men that I check who have a raised PSA hmm. turn out not to have cancer. Right. Because they have the additional tests and actually... The PSA comes down on its own right. after a couple of months, or the examination of the prostate is actually normal, and we decide to repeat the PSA. Right. I see. So you could repeat the P PSA and, and see whether that changes, and that would also That's might right. be an indication. Right. But I suppose there's a whole host of different sort of possible scenarios. Aren't there? there are, and. There are some scenarios where it's clearer than others. Mm. So if, for example, we do a PSA and it's very high, then that leads us in one direction. Mm. But a PSA that's normal with a prostate examination, on the whole, will reassure us right. that it's unlikely to be a cancer. Okay. All right. <laughs> Now, I appreciate that we've talked about a lot of things, and it can be confusing. Mm. What I'd like to do is to share with you some information that you can have a look at. And then, if I make an appointment for us to meet again on Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. we can, you can tell me what your thoughts are then. We can go through any questions sure. that you've thought of since we've had this discussion. The reason that I've given you all this explanation and gone through it in detail is that for yourself, you don't have any particular symptoms of a prostate problem. So, you don't have any blood when you pass water, 
you're able to pass water freely, mm -hmm. the stream's quite good, you're not having to get up at night too often. Now, if you'd had those symptoms, we would have gone on to do an examination, would have gone on to do the PSA test. Right. However, because you don't have any of those symptoms, it makes it a little bit more complicated, which is why I think it'd be a good idea for you to have a look through this information so that we can make a balanced decision next time we meet. Mm, that sounds reasonable, yes. The challenges in this consultation were twofold, really. One was maintaining a, a decent rapport with the patient when you're guiding them through what are quite complicated thoughts. The other is knowing myself and being sure of myself of the numbers of what the benefits are to the patient and what the disbenefits or the problems are going to be if you make a decision which just gives in to the idea of having a PSA test. Now PSA tests are like any screening test or any screening tool that they have problems as well as benefits and it's trying to keep that balance. Now for the PSA test we have a whole series of issues around the false positives, the false negatives and in fact what you would do even if you were to have a raised PSA. Would you go on and have a period of watchful waiting? Would you then seek to refer people up straight away? And so on. Even when you refer patients up to the urologists, there's a degree of difference of opinion about what they would do. So a proportion of those patients that go up to our patients would have watchful waiting, a proportion would be biopsied immediately, and a proportion would be treated. And of course, when you look at the outcomes data, it just is not reliable enough to tell you which of those methods is the right one to go for. Which I guess brings us right back to the issues that we face here. That in a patient who has no prostatic symptoms, who has no family history, but is asking for a PSA test, you have to try and clarify what the patient is really asking for, plus being able to give a reasoned and informed set of information, ideally backed up with the written information that we have from the PSA screening program. Of course, everyone who has an HIV test has pre-test counselling. In its way, this is just as important a set of information that you're giving to someone before the PSA test.